Hello my dear AI enthusiasts! Today, when we already mastered our text-to-image and image-to-image -image in stable diffusion, it's time to talk about ControlNet. Using ControlNet, you can control the output of your generations with great precision. That's the right tool to use when you know what you want to get and you have a reference, as an image or just in your head. When it comes to generating images with people, it's very easy to get a picture of a beautiful woman in some nice background, but if you want something specific, for example, a specific position or colors or composition, or maybe you want to uh, generate a picture with multiple characters interacting with each other, it can be tricky. And here ControlNet comes in handy. There are a few different control net models and each of them has its own purpose. Don't mistake them with the checkpoint models. It's totally different thing, but you can use them together for a complete experience. So how do we start with control net? If you have your automatic 11 UI installed, you can just install control net models on this step when you're running it. And if you still don't have stable diffusion installed, you can check out my video about installation and getting started. And when you're ready, let's dive into control net stuff. Let's run all these cells and uh, on the one of them, uh, before we actually run the stable diffusion, there is a step control net and you see there are three uh, inputs here where we can uh, choose which uh, control net models we want to install. If you run uh, Stable Diffusion Excel, just select here all of them. Or if you run uh, version 1 or version 2, just select the matching uh, input. So I will run uh, Stable Diffusion Excel, so I select all uh, of the models here. You can see that uh, in, for the Excel version we only have five models and then for version one we have like plenty of them uh, so uh, if you are interested in exploring more of the different models you can try it with version one but i'm going to show these uh, stable diffusion excel models for control net in this video so let's move on let's hit this button as well and uh, let's wait for our collab for our notebook to run. So when I was running my uh, collab notebook, I got this error uh, about Xformers and uh, it can happen uh, with you as well. So I'll quickly show you how to fix it. So why it happens? Uh, because sometimes uh, things can uh, get updated and some versions are not compatible with each other. I hope when you watch this video, this error will already be fixed, but in case if not, uh, I'll just share a little hack uh, with you. That's how I managed to fix my collab notebook. I just downgraded some libraries because the problem was uh, caused by some dependencies mismatch. So I downgraded PyTorch and some other libraries and it helped, it worked for me. I hope uh, you'll be fine as well. Uh, so uh, yeah, now uh, when our stable diffusion is running, we can finally start generating our pictures. So that's our uh, stable diffusion interface and uh, we can access control net here. Uh, it is hidden under this arrow. So if you click on it, you will uh, expand this section for control net and uh, we need to uh, upload our image, our reference. Uh, so I took this image from Unsplash and I will leave credits to the photographer below in the description. This is a woman, she has interesting position with her hands and her hair are kind of blown away with the wind. What I want to do is to uh, keep this uh, composition, keep the pose of the model and keep this waving hair. So we can do that with control net. Let's take a look at the options uh, available. So first thing, of course, we need to do is to enable it. If it's not enabled, this little checkbox should be checked. And also if dimensions of the uh, original image are different from the dimensions you're gonna use in your generation, you also should check the pixel perfect um, checkbox. And make sure if you're using Stable Diffusion Excel that you have 1024 here and I'll just add some sampling steps as well. And here in the control net specific settings, uh, 
you see that we have different types of control net, preprocessor and the model. So basically you need to choose one of these types, for example, Kenny. And then uh, it will reload preprocessor and the model. For every preprocessor, there are some dedicated models. So if you choose preprocessor Kani here, you should choose the model that has Kani in the name as well. And you see there are a few of them. And the first one is for Stable Diffusion 1.5 and second one is for Excel. And we need this one for Stable Diffusion Excel. What will happen if you choose the wrong version, if you choose the 1.5? So let's see what will happen. Um, there will be just an error, but I'll just uh, demonstrate it to you. So you see the preview has worked, but if I hit the generate button, it will just give me an error, a runtime error that shapes cannot be multiplied. And yeah, that's because we, uh, we chose the wrong model. So make sure that you selected the Excel one and let's regenerate preview as well. And you see the preview is uh, pretty the same. And that's how our Kenny model works. I will zoom it a little bit. So you see it is just the lines. And these lines are um, very good with the hair because you see it uh, kind of reproduced all the uh, hair waves. We also have these preprocessor specific settings. So uh, Kenny low threshold and Kenny high threshold. It is for amount of the details, so we can kind of um, change it. And let's see how our preview will change. Now I lower the both of these values. And I think there are a little bit more lines in the hair. So uh, if I do even lower, yeah, now there are much more lines here. I think I probably need to adjust it a little bit. So you see, uh, now we uh, kind of see uh, this, uh, we have this visibility of the hair and everything. I also want to uh, change these um, settings for resize mode because this uh, um, size of our original image is different. We are going to generate a square picture when our original picture is rectangle. So we need to choose the resize mode. Now it's crop and resize, but I prefer uh, resize and fill. And uh, in this control mode uh, settings, we have balanced our uh, and prompt more important and control net is more important. So you can play with these ones. I will leave uh, balanced for now. I want to try something that uh, is called uh, guessing mode. Uh, when we are uh, making control net to guess what is on the picture without giving it any prompt. So I'm leaving the prompt empty for now and I will just, uh, I will just add some styles because I want to, let's say I want to have an, an analog film uh, picture and I want to add some negative prompt, just default negative and let's generate. Okay, so it generated our girl and uh, it kept the pose and the hair, uh, but uh, honestly it doesn't look great, uh, this picture, because it has some artifacts. But basically it kept a lot from the original picture because these lines are very detailed. What we can do instead, if you want to get something more different from the original picture, uh, we can I uh, change the model, for example, I'll switch to a uh, juggernaut Excel and instead of the uh, analog film uh, style, I'll try to, to do some cyberpunk again and I will make a robotic woman or maybe even a woman with a robotic hand or arm. And uh, yeah, let's wait when our um, custom uh, checkpoint uh, loads and then I'll try to generate. Okay, so it generated us a very bright image of a woman, uh, but her arms don't look too robotic to me. 
Uh, so I think it is still because we have a pretty smooth hand here and it tries to, to stick to these uh, lines. So what you can do is uh, to change here to my prompt is more important and we also can uh, play with this control weight. We can maybe reduce it a little bit. We can try again and I also will remove this cinematic light. It's too cinematic for me. So let's try it again. Uh, okay, now it looks much better. Uh, you see that uh, her arm is very much robotic now, but we lost the second arm. So now it uh, just ignores the vertical arm and it uh, only shows this uh, one the one that lays horizontally but still the position of the model is uh, the same just a little bit less of wavy hair um, we can also try different model for example we can try open pose this is also a very good one uh, if you want to keep hands and arms and face in certain uh, position so let's switch to the uh, excel model and I will return the control weight to 1 and I will return it to balanced. And uh, let's generate the preview. So what open pose does for us? It uh, creates these lines. As you see, it has uh, lines of her shoulders and her uh, hands, her arms. And it also has a face and even a facial expression. We can rely on these lines and we can try to generate another one, another robotic woman. Okay, it created us another one, but it uh, did not uh, follow the preview that much. Uh, so it generated us a different position. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's a tricky one because her uh, hands are kind of hidden in the bottom. Uh, what else we can try? We can try to uh, use uh, the depth and this is an interesting one and that uh, is one of my favorite because it gives a lot of different opportunities. So there are a few uh, preprocessors here and let's start with this depth Zoe. I think that's the simplest one probably. So let's select our depth model for Excel and let's generate the preview. And you see compared to the Kenny model, uh, the open pose, it did not uh, really care about the hair because it only uh, got the position of her like bones and it did not, did not read position of hair at all. So this is a, this is a depth. And you see that the object, the main object, the main uh, plan of our picture is white and the background is black. And uh, there, is not, mm, there is nothing what we could uh, tweak here. So we can just try to generate it as it is. Let me just change the cyberpunk uh, to something else, just, uh, just for the difference. Let's say digital art maybe. So let's uh, change our style maybe to the dystopian one and let's try to generate another robotic woman. Okay, this time uh, our control net did really well. It kept the hair and it also kept the position of the arms very precisely. And uh, because we added the dystopian prompt, it did it in the uh, Mad Max uh, decorations. Uh, looks, looks good really. The only uh, detail I don't like is the eye. Her eyes closed, but it is really easy to fix with the uh, in paint. Uh, so we don't really care about it. And uh, yeah, what else we have here in this uh, depth preprocessors? We also have these depth layers and depth uh, layers plus plus. Let's try the uh, plus plus one. And uh, yeah, we will still have the same model selected. We only change preprocessor. 
and um, what's the difference? Let's generate a preview. Okay, so it uh, created our depth mask. Compared to the previous one, uh, you see that we got some additional settings here. Remove near and remove background. So uh, it is self-explanatory. We can remove the background, for example. And uh, let's try, let's generate the preview. And you see if before there was some uh, depth in the background, now it is just black. And if we remove near, let's see how it will work. Uh, okay, so it just removed all the shadows. I don't like it. Let's just return it back to zero. I like it this way better. So uh, this one we can use to change the background on the picture. For example, if we change our prompt now and we will say futuristic city in the background and let's see because if you uh, look at this picture that we generated with the previous preprocessor it's it kind of kept the background it added some details to it because here it's just blurred it's nothing but it still kept the colors and the gradient of this background so now we expect that it will generate something completely new for us Okay, so it generated a futuristic city as I asked, but it also added some clouds and in general, um, yeah, the picture is good. The only thing I don't like, I don't like the arms. They are kind of lost a little bit because it's too many robotics details. Um, yeah, so that's not great, but we could probably play a little bit with the settings. For example, we could maybe add some control weight. We can try to not remove that much of the background. Yeah, let's uh, give it one more chance and I'll probably change the dystopian to uh, futuristic, for example. And let's see. Okay, that's quite artsy and uh, a bit strange. I don't really like it, but uh, you can see that the hands, the arms are there and they are even still robotic. Uh, so that's our depth uh, model. And what else we have? We have depth meters. Let's see the preview. Uh, okay, so this one, uh, it doesn't really have uh, much details on the uh, shape of the person. So uh, let's try to generate something with this one. We still have this futuristic city. I'll remove it. And I want to, to generate a manga this time. So let's try. Okay, that's a funny picture. Um, and it still kept the arm, so that's fine, I guess. What else I want to try is to see how ControlNet would handle uh, images with two people. So let's delete this one and let's upload something from the images I prepared for today. I decided to split this video in two or maybe even three because it's getting too long. And in the next one, we are going to generate an image with a couple of characters. So see you in the next episode.